Hey, welcome back. Andrew the Wolf here, and we are behind the scenes today. So, what are we doing today? Well, I'll give you a few updates. What's coming up, what's going on, how to do a great giveaway for your pants sloper class, and I'm finishing up, I'll be almost finished with the lacy today. We're gonna sew in the sleeves, and we're gonna sew in the side seams. Press up the hem. I think I have that in the right order. <laughs> Anyways, I just got the sergers ready, and so we should be ready to roll. So welcome, say hi. If you've never been here before, say hi, say where you're from, because I love to see all the places, especially the countries that everyone is from. So I see many of you already rolling in. Good morning, good morning. Well, it's actually afternoon. Here just feels like morning. It's been a busy day today. So I hope you're all doing well. And I want to just give you a quick insight if you haven't entered the giveaway. It's free to enter. I had a few emails of people asking how to enter the pant sloper giveaway. So I also, at the same time, got a bunch of emails on how to catch the last brother shows uh, last week when Jerry had that really cool project and then there was the mug rug. So I'm gonna give you a quick tutorial on that and then we'll go over to the lacy. So, all right. And by the way, I am live. This is not uh, recorded. I'm live on YouTube, my Facebook channel, Twitter and Twitch. So say hi and I can see all of your comments rolling in. So welcome to the party. Hello, Susan and Emily, Catherine. All right, so let me just show you real quick how to get to the giveaway, because there's two things you have to do to enter, and you still have one week to do so. So you can only enter once, but um, I'll show you how to do this. So go over to this website here, and I'll put a link in the comments so you can't miss it. This is... You have a lot of ways to get to this website. You can go to AngelaWolf.com and click on blog, or you can go to Fashion Sewing with Angela Wolf. Either one is fine. All right, so once you're there, here is the blog right here up here at the top. If you're not in the newsletter, I sent one out uh, yesterday. Make sure you get into that. And you can click here to read what's happening. So this is the last video from last week. And I actually have the video there for you to play. Make sure I have my glasses on so I can see this correctly. And then here are the directions for that mug rug in case you missed that, because that was a great, great tutorial. All right, when you scroll down, you can scroll through the rest of my blog post, which right here is the Pant Sloper Fitting Online Course. And this is where the giveaway is. So I will post this into the comments as well, just to make sure you can find it. All right, so when you go on to here, it tells you about the class. I'd love to have you in class, too. It starts a week from Monday, so about 10 days from now. Uh, the only supplies you need is some muslin fabric, the pattern supplied in the class. That's all you need, and we're going to start from the beginning, so there's no prep work. Everything starts when the class starts. Okay, so scroll down here. This is how you enter. Here's the official entry form. You scroll through this, and it tells you about the class. You put in your name. I have asked you a few questions, click submit, and then you are officially entered. You have to do that part first. And then if you'd like an extra entry, scroll down here and leave a comment. And if you leave a comment, I take both of those together and the comments give you an extra entry. So I had a few people asking, are you, am I entered? I didn't see my name. So if your name is in the comments here, that means you got the second entry, but make sure you filled out the official entry form, which is right here on the blog. So you have to scroll down, fill that out, and click submit. All right, any questions on that? So that should help that email. And also at the same time, while you're there, you can scroll through the blog post and you can see some of the past stuff. So again, I mentioned that I was gonna start putting the brother uh, videos in here to make it easier for you to scroll. Um, so they should be up. All right, so now the lacy. I saw quite a few of you working on the lacy. I'm very excited. Mine's turning out pretty, pretty darn good. I think I have it over. There's the top and there's the sleeve. So today I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to insert your sleeves into a knit top. Like I mentioned, I don't like easing the sleeve cap for knits. And also, if you look at the sleeve cap for a basic t-shirt, it kind of, it's kind of like this. <laughs> But my t-shirts are more like this, meaning they're a little more fitted in the sleeve. So that's my preference. And so you want to make sure that you can fit that sleeve cap in there really nice on a knit because you can't ease it or you're going to have puckers all over the map. So I'll start working on that and I'll just make sure I'm not missing any questions before I move on to that. 
Are the washers in place? No, they are not. Uh, they said that they are going to have them finished on Friday. So next Friday, actually. So that means in the middle, by the way, the schedule for the week is really, really busy. So at that same website that I just showed you, let me bring that up one more time. Here you go. If you scroll to the top and click on classes and events, that gives you the full schedule. So this week we have a lot going on. And if you just scroll down here, it tells you the schedule. What are we at? September. So just FYI, Fashion Sewing Club, I sent out a newsletter two days ago to you that was different than the one I sent out yesterday. So if you didn't get it, be sure to let me know. Uh, because we have our live Zoom members only Q&A. You can ask any question, anything you're working on. I'm there. We're hanging out for an hour and you get to see the faces of all of your fellow Fashion Sewing Club members. So that's today at 430. You don't want to miss that. And if you're not in the Fashion Sewing Club, we would love to have you there. Tomorrow, which is Thursday, there will be a live show at noon. And I believe it's Brenda and Jane Olson that will be on. They have a great tutorial on the ruffler foot. If you've ever worked on the ruffler foot or wondered how to do gathers, how to measure, uh, they're doing gathers, they're doing ruffles, and they're doing pin tucks. <laughs> I knew there was something else. I'm like, what is that called? Oh, yeah, pin tuck. And so that's tomorrow at noon. Tomorrow's a really busy day. Tomorrow at 3, there is an online virtual class that I'm doing on pattern review on adding exposed zippers to your hem. So if you're adding an exposed zipper, zipper to your jean hem, to your jacket, uh, anything like that, to skirts, it's a little different than the last class that we had about exposed zippers. This is kind of exposed zippers part two. <laughs> and that's tomorrow at three on pattern review. There's links all on that website. And then tomorrow, right when I finish that, I think it's at 4.30, yeah. So the class goes from 3 to 4.30. At 4.40, I will be hopping on live on All Brands, talking with Barbara. They're going to be in Biloxi, Mississippi. I will be live in my studio, but we're going to get a preview of what's happening there. It's an embroidery event, which is going to be very cool. That's tomorrow. And then next week is the Sew Fest with Blaine. You've seen us do that before. I'll be co-hosting with him, and there will be a lot of great classes. I think I'll be teaching a couple in there, too. So mark your calendars. A lot going on. All right, so I saw a question here about how is Joanne? Who just asked that? Donna. All right, so yeah, if you watched yesterday's show yesterday, we had on Brother, we had to come to a little bit of an abrupt end. Joanne is doing fine. I talked to her. She's recovering. She's resting. Um, so that is the update. I talked to her last night, and uh, we've been texting back and forth this morning. So uh, she appreciates your thoughts and prayers. And uh, yeah, you never know what's going to happen during a live show, right? Whew. All right. Hey, Melody, what is the knits class? Um, just checking. And by the way, Melody, I thank you for your great uh, instructions that you've kept for so long. She even sent me some photos of 2019. I got them all filled in this weekend for Fashion Sewing Club. You'll hear all about that this afternoon. So, oh, thanks, Helen. All right. Are you ready, everyone? Oh, Clovis, by the way, I heard that you, did you tell me that you entered? I'm not judging, so I, I can say, did you enter something for the SoFest competition? Did any of you enter? There's, they had a great giveaway for that. So I agree, Donna, that was a little bit frightening. I agree, I agree, yeah. So uh, gotta learn how to do CPR over the internet, right? <laughs> No, I'm not kidding, by the way. I'm totally not making light of that. All of a sudden, you're thinking, what do I do? Oh. Uh, Melody, my class for the studio for the Knits Dying class. Oh, um, yes, that is in, that's a few weeks from now. That's a month. Oh, you're talking about for the washers and dryers. Yes, that's what it's for. And that class is the second week of October, I think. It's on my website. And that's in person, and there's only one spot left if you want to join us. I'm keeping that class really small, so there's plenty of room to make a mess with all of the dyed materials. Right? Oh, you entered both. Home decor and garment. That's awesome. Excellent. And thank you, Melody. <laughs> all right, so let's go sew, right? All right, so here is my top. And let me just take this banner off so you don't have to stare at that for a little while. Okay, so let's go see how this is going. And be sure to ask your questions because I will take a break and come back and uh, check on this. All right, give me a sec. I'll meet you there. Okie doke. Okay. 
All right, so I actually had started pinning my sleeves and I thought, you know what, you might like this. So again, if you're new to the party, this is what we're sewing. And if you look closely here, I've sewn my back. Here's all my back pieces. So there's pieces all through here. Then here's my front. And it's a good idea when you're finished sewing your front to the back, because there's a lot of little pieces that you've put together here. Just make sure that, you know, knits can be a little flimsy. So if you look and there's a little indention here, or this doesn't line up nice and smooth, just trim it. Now this lines up fine, but I'm just going to give you an example. Just trim it. Don't be afraid to make sure that that's a nice, smooth area. If for some reason one of your seams didn't match up, make sure it fits, or make it work is what we should say. And then I always like to take my top now, now that I've sewn the front to the back, I'm folding this in half, double check that that's a nice, flat, smooth curve. And I can see just one little piece of fabric here. I mean, it's like the tiniest piece, but I'm really a nitpicker at this. It just makes it easier when you go to sew. And now, can you guess what I'm going to do next with my top? Yes, you're right. For those of you that have watched me forever, I'm going to get a, a little snip for the center back and a little snip for the center front. It makes it much easier to put your collar on later. All right, so now let's lay this flat. So this is the front of the garment and this is the back. And if you were worried about fit, now would be the time to just baste in your side seams and try it on. I know this fits because I've made this top a couple of times. So here is my sleeve. I've decided to add a short sleeve to this one this time. So there's a couple things I do before I even insert this sleeve. Oh, a little flimsy fabric there. All right, so there's my sleeve. I give myself an itsy bitsy snip at the shoulder. And then I give myself a snip at the back marks and the front marks. I'm not going to snip the front marks right now because I did not snip my top. I know how to fit this in without those. But I like to give myself the two back snips because you want to make sure that you put this in where the back goes in the back and the front goes in the front. Okay, so now before I even get started, I want to go press up my hem. It makes it so much easier to do this later. So I think if we did this right, the insides are the right side. So I'm going to put a little X on here. Here and I will meet you at the iron. All right, on my way. I just see a couple questions. Uh, Mary, can you make the lacy less fitted? Oh yes, of course. If you go back, I think maybe three, maybe um, the little pack can help you. Go back three or four episodes where I showed how to turn it into a dress. I actually showed you how to make those side seams go out a little bit. So you can take out the side seams, just, just angle them out just a little bit. That'll give you plenty of room. And if you want more in the back, you know, you have two panels of fabric, you can even extend those out a little bit too. And if you just want just a little bit of extra room, just go up a size. That's always a really easy way to do that. Great question too. All right. I think that was it. Let's go to the ironing board. I knew I'd get there eventually. Number four. <laughs> Door number four is the ironing board. Okay. So I, this is why it's always nice to have your little chalk mark here. I love these guides on this ironing board because it gives me, I want to turn this up about an inch. And look, that's an inch. I mean, I'm sure this was probably designed for quilting or something like that, but um, it works really good for sewing. And if I wanted a half an inch, I'd go up a half of an inch. Use the Taylor's clapper to make that a nice crisp crease. All right, so now I will flip that back down when I sew this in and when I sew my side seams. But then when it comes to sewing, this is already pressed and ready to hem. That's how, I tell you guys, I can actually make a top so quickly. 
and this is why. I will go and press all of my sleeves, all my hems, usually everything up before I even get started. But that's only because I know that the top fits. I don't have to do extra fitting on it. All right, give it a little steam. There, that looks good. Okay, back to the table. You know what? It's really funny. You guys didn't tell me that my volume was off. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let me just make sure you can hear me now. Oh, that's really funny. Did all of you have your... Um... I just have to check. Were all of you turning your volume way up? <laughs> because I had the volume turned off to every single uh, camera. So uh, hopefully you were reading my words or reading my mind. If you have any questions before I go forward, I'll ask that. <laughs> I know, I like that, Joan, definitely. And Cynthia, I agree, it's a super time saver. Helen, you can hear me, that's amazing, because everything's off. You know those gremlins in our studio. <laughs> oh, well, okay, as long as you can hear me, let's go back to the table. Hi, Renee, I love it when you watch my videos when they pop into your feed. Okay, back to where we were. So I have my snip up here, and there's my two back snips. So I know that this is going to need to attach to the back. So I like to lay my pattern flat like this to get started. And I do use pins for my sleeve just because it makes it easier for me to bring it over to the serger. Fabric can get really wonky on these knits. Be very careful though, because you don't want to put any holes in your knit. All right, so I'm going to start with my back side. So I mark my shoulder with a pin, and then I mark my underarm area. And that's really the only pins you need. But because I'm live, I'm going to pin a few more just to make sure. You want to just make sure that you have cut everything correctly. Knits can slide a little bit. But when I go to sew, I actually straighten this fabric out while I sew. You know, your armholes like this, I'm going to straighten this out. It makes it so much easier to put in place. And you want to make sure that your sleeve and the body of your garment is one-to-one, -one, meaning one-to-one. -one. They equal each other. There's no gathering. There's no easing, anything like that for this knit. I'm just going to slide this fabric up. So I'm basically sliding the under fabric of the garment to match my sleeve. Okay, and now let's bring this over to the other side. And also, if you happen to cut something wrong or, you know, heaven forbid I have a pattern that doesn't fit correctly, <laughs> I try to check those a lot, but you never know when the new one comes out. So as you move around the sleeve, if for any reason your sleeve is a lot bigger than your arm, arm's eye or it's a lot smaller, now's the time to fix it, not later. All right, looks like as I straighten the fabric out, it matches just perfectly. There's no gapping, everything matches nicely. And then when I go to serge this, I will make sure I just straighten the fabric out as I serge it. All right, let's pin the other side. Uh, so by the way, what have you guys been sewing? I did see a couple pictures um, in, I actually went into the Fashion Sewing Club. Kara Myers did a really cool job. Oops, did I forget to mark that top? Or the snip didn't go through, we'll go with that. Uh, Karen Myers did a really cool job on that Bella knit where you put two of those together. Kudos on that. All right, let's 
do it again. This is the front now. Just easing that around. Wrong word, not easing, moving, maneuvering. <laughs> All right, that fits nicely. And let's go around the other side. And then we'll go to the serger, serge these, and then we're just gonna do the entire side seam and arm side seam at the same time. Now for this top, I'm not gonna press up the hem on the garment first before I sew that seam. I'm gonna do it second because there's plenty of room at the bottom. For a fitted like Sabre's tee or something like that, then I would press it up first. All right, so I know my, I've got right sides together. I've got two armholes to sew in. Let's go to the serger. All right, I see a question from Cindy, which is a great question. Any reason why I use pins instead of clips? These are um, silk pins, so they're or glass head pins. They're really, really fine. That's the only pins I would use on knits. I Clips to me are bulky on something like this, but you could use either. It's just my preference. In fact, if I were teaching you, I would encourage you to use clips versus pins because if you get a hole in your knit, you're not going to be happy. Hello, hello. Oh, Trisha said I sound like I was in a tunnel. Well, at least you could hear me, right? All right, any other questions? I think I got that. Helen. Oh, yay, Helen, and I finally answered your email, so sorry about that. I answered it over the weekend. Arnell, I saw your email come through too, so I'll get to that this afternoon. All right, so let's go here. It is that time, Helen, to start working on jackets. I was thinking that actually this weekend. What do I feel like sewing right now? Well, I'm still into knit tops, but jackets are going to be very near and dear. And pants, of course, with our pant fitting sloper class. All right, so here on my serger, I just have it set to a four thread overlock. And I'm using my gift from Susan to hold my pins because these are all my silk pins. These over in the red compartment are a mixture of stuff that I would would never want to use those big ones like this. Never want to use these on a knit or any like quilting pins, nothing like that. Okay, so my other serger's in the shop still, so I'm going to just use this is the Brother 1634D serger, and full disclosure, I am a brand ambassador for them. And notice how I'm just straightening the fabric out as I work on this serger. So let me just bring you right here. I'm holding it up, and then I just pick a spot where I hold it, and then I'll take these pins out. And there is a half-inch seam allowance, so make sure you're trimming off some enough fabric to make a half-inch seam allowance. All right, now stop when you get to the, this is the sleeve cap, what we call it. Make sure you straighten the fabric out. Number one, this will help you sew your stitching through both layers of fabric. And number two, when you do that, you'll make sure that you're not stretching the fabric too much, that everything lays nice and flat. And if you've ever surged a sleeve and ended up with fabric that kind of got maybe folded like this over and stitched again, this will prevent that. If you don't know what that means, then just ignore it. But if you've done that before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I don't think there's a word for it because it puts a hole in your sleeve gap. Well, there's probably a word for it, but not one I could use on uh, live shows. Because I'm sure there's children watching somewhere. <laughs> All right, so there's my beautiful sleeve gap. See how nice that looks? See the other side. Do we have any words? No, see how it's nice and flat. What I was talking about is every once in a while when you're stitching, if your sleeve cap or your bottom of your sleeve gets folded a little bit 
and you accidentally tuck both pieces into your seam. Have you ever done that? Well, I have, so don't be embarrassed if you have. All right, I haven't done it in a long time, but if I'm gonna do it, it'll surely be during a live show. And then see how nice that lays. So when it's fitted to your arm, you have a nice sleeve cap. Beautiful. Doesn't that look like faux leather? It's a knit, but, and then I can see that my hem is like pretty much ready to go. Okay, now let's do the other one. Oh, come on, I know that more of you have done that before, where you've surged around the corner and you accidentally cut the bottom piece of fabric or you cut something that you didn't mean to cut and you ended up with a hole. So then my next question is, how did you fix it? <laughs> That's what I'm wondering, how did you fix it? You gotta come up with something really creative to add embroidery over it, applique. <laughs> And make sure that you never surge over pins. That would be a really big no-no. So just hold it. Hold the fabric up. You don't ever want to push it down on your serger like this. It'll stretch it out. So I'm holding it up just like if it was on a flattened surface. pretty good I don't see any what you want to look for is if for any reason you stopped and your fabric maybe is sewn or surged like this or it's not a nice curve if it has like any straight bumps or something then you'd want to go and just surge it again this looks pretty good though let me check that one right when it no oh, that looks okay when you go over the bumps you just want to make sure that it went over smoothly all right so the next thing we're gonna do is turn the top inside out now, I did some alterations on this top. So if the bottom is longer than the front or whatever, I'm just gonna make it work. Where I wanna make sure it fits is at the underarm seam. So let me take you back to the table just so you can see this. I think you'll see it better up there. Okay. So what I've done here is I've turned my garment inside out. So I've got my side seam. And my sleeve up here. And I know it's navy on navy, so you just have to bear with me on the color. So what I do is I turn these seam allowances from the sleeve or from the arm's eye Turn those down towards the garment. If your knit's really thick and you need to split that up, you could turn one one way and turn one the other, if that makes it easier to surge over. But, and this is where I will put one pin because that's the most important place that your top needs to match. So I know I'll start at the edge here, surge all the way down, and then up. I usually don't use any pins on this, but I will put a couple here just because we're live, just to make sure that I'm not twisting and looking at a camera. And I'm pinning in the seam allowances, in within the seam allowance. Oh, hey, now that's pretty lucky. That never happens when I'm doing like quick pattern alterations on the fly. I usually make it work. So if you laid this all out and you did some alterations and the front of your top maybe ends here and the back of your top ends here. Well, basically when you're finished sewing that side seam, don't fret. Finish sewing that side seam, lay it flat and you can retrim that, okay? I know we made a lot of changes and some of you might've made even more than I did. I always say never fret over that unless you made it like this short. Well, I mean, I guess that's the in style right now. I'm not saying that I would wear that, but <laughs> you could have a little crop top for somebody. So for those of you that missed the be very beginning of this, I showed you how to take the pattern and turn it into a dress. And then while I was cutting this beautiful fabric that I found in my stash, 
uh, which I still have the snakeskin available. I bought uh, quite a bit of that because I, um, I had sold out. I decided to turn this into a top because I have a perfect pair of leggings for this to go over. And it would also look really cute over my dark skinny jeans. All right, and did this one match too? Wow, we're at, we're about a thousand today. All right, so we're gonna start, I start right at the sleeve edge and surge all the way down, start at the other one, all the way down. I'll meet you at the sewing machine. All right, it's like I'm going to the searcher, but I have to say, hey, Karen, your ears must have been ringing. Did you know that I was talking about you, about that beautiful Bella top that you pattern hacked and put two of them together? Oh, I love that. So cute. Okay. You ready? Now make sure you have your half inch seam allowance because that's what the pattern is called for unless you did a pattern hack and changed it. When you get to that underarm seam, just make sure you have a nice, a nice flow right over that underarm seam. You don't want it to have too much bulk in there. Again, I'm making sure I'm capturing both layers of fabric here. And when you get to the end, just hold that piece together. There you go. I know I need to get my thread cutters on here. I haven't used the serger in a while. And uh, a thread cutter on here would be perfect. All right, let's do the other side. great and I used a four thread overlock I'll just bring this up a little bit so you can see so I have all four threads two needles and then two loopers uh, because when you have a knit top you want to have extra strength and that four thread just gives you enough strength but it'll still stretch to put it on over your head so if you have a serger from like I don't know eons ago like really a long time ago some of their four thread didn't stretch as well. So, I mean, I'm talking like 20 some years ago. Most of the sergers now are all really good quality. So, all right. Okay, so let's go back to the table. And, oh, actually, no, we're going to go to the ironing board because we need to press up our hemp. I see a question real quick here. Karen, I have a brother's serger. Uh, is a thread cutter an attachment I should buy? So I have those, Karen, with my logo on them, Angela Wolf ones. Their thread cutters are on my website. Um, so I'm going to definitely put one on this. Any machine that doesn't have a side cutter, I end up putting that in just because it's faster, easier just to serge and then rip it down the side. Or not rip, literally, but <laughs> cut. <laughs> yes. Hey, Sharon, welcome to the party. All right, any other questions for me before I go to the, all right, let's go to the ironing board. My allergies are killing me today, so excuse me if I'm sniffling. 
Tis the season, right? Yesterday we had these huge storms come through, like monstrous storms. Oh, let me take your comment off. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sharon, you just wanted to hang out there for a little bit, right? <laughs> Oh, so anyways, yesterday we had huge storms come through, monster buckets of, I'm not uh, complaining at all, but because we had safety and nothing happened, but I had eight alerts for weather, and I was like, eight, how could there be eight? It was lightning, storms, winds, hail, and uh, like a nine on the pollen alert. I was like, oh, you couldn't leave that one off for the day, right? Nope. Okay. So you can see my side seam. Now let's look at the hem because now I need to prep my hem to get it ready to run to the cover stitch machine, which I don't think, let's see how we're doing on time. I don't think we'll have time to do that today, but at least you'll get the idea. Now next week, by the way, if you're going to watch any of the show with Blaine, one of the classes, it's like a 30, they have a bunch of 30 minute free classes and I am going to be showing how to hem knits on the double cover stitch machine. And of course, I'll pick a fabric that's not navy on navy so you'll be able to see it really good. Maybe I'll get this top finished in time and I could just wear this next week. So you give it a little steam as you go around these curves. Because remember, the lacy has a curve at the hem, so it can get a little tricky. So I lay my fabric flat. You can see the curve here. And then fold up your hem. And let the fabric do what it wants to do. If you have an area that wants to curve a little more than what you have it planned for, just let it do it. I just find, let the fabric do what it wants to do and your hem's gonna look a lot better. Because when I run the cover stitch to the other side, if I have any excess sticking out, I can just cut that off. All right, now we're to the back, so I make sure that my seam allowances for these go whichever way I want them to do, which they all aim towards the center back. I'm just going to let the fabric kind of move, maneuver itself on that curve. If you do that, then you know it's going to lay flat and not pucker out or turn out or. I know that white's a little hot on there on the camera. Sorry about that. All right. So now for, if you look from the right side. My hem looks so nice. Now, by the way, I have an iron shoe on here. If you don't have an iron shoe, just put your seam up a little bit above this and then press it. Don't put your iron on top of your knits if you don't have an iron shoe or a press cloth, but an iron shoe is preferable. All right, so then I need to run this through the cover stitch. And then my last step will be to decide if I want it to be a circle for the neckline, or if I want a V-neck, like what I'm wearing today. And I will let you all vote on that. So you have to vote on two things. You're voting on two things. One, should I make it a V-neck? We did this in Fashion Sewing Club where we did the V-necks. Should I turn that into a V-neck? Or because the hem is a curve and all the seams are curvy, would the curve look better? I vote curve, but I'll wait to see what you say. But then the next, the big thing is, should I use snakeskin fabric for the neckline? Or should I use navy for the neckline? Why don't we bring that back to the table so you can get a good look at it and then you can vote. Okay. So this is the front. 
front doesn't have much on it, just these two little snips up here. So it looks like this. And then the back looks like this. So should I use this for the neckline or should I use the navy? I don't know, I think almost either would look fine. The navy might tie in this area here. Hmm. I don't know. You guys can all vote. Wolfpack, what should I do? And then you know what's going to happen is I'll end up going through my fabric stash and I will look and I will think, hmm, I kind of like this pink and I'll throw something pink on there. <laughs> no, I try not to do that. So I'll wait to see what your vote is, um, but I won't, I won't finish this till next week, so. Snakeskin, navy, either. We got a lot of navies. And Darlene says, curve with the snakeskin. I agree with that. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Oh, you guys all like the snakeskin. Hmm. Navy, so you wear a necklace. Ooh, that's an idea, like a, a hanging silver one. Yeah, I could do that. Oh, thanks, Lois. I do like the V-neck. Oh gosh, I'm gonna have to go back through here. And so you guys keep, cause I know a lot of people watch the show after the live, keep voting. And then how about both for the neckline? Oh, Cynthia. Hmm, let's go take a look at that. Let's see what that will look like. Okay, so I have just a strip of, I know I cut the neckline earlier, but I don't know what I did with it, so I'll have to cut another one. So you're saying one of each. So if I went, say, this is the neckline, the front. You're thinking maybe, now this is not my binding. I'm just using this as an example, okay? So you're thinking if I went Maybe one around like this. Again, this is not my exact binding. I'm just grabbing some fabric that I had on. Oh, I kind of like that twisted neckline too. Hmm. So you're thinking having maybe the snake skin and then the navy on top like this? That's kind of a good idea. That was creative. Or I have another idea. What about this? I think I did this in a top one time. Now, again, this is not my binding piece. I just grabbed a piece of fabric. So somebody pop again that says, oh my gosh, that's the selvage. Don't worry, I know it. So let's just say that I have this cut for binding. And this cut for binding. And what about if we did something? I loved that when you when you gave me that idea. I love the twisted neckline with the snakeskin. That would be very cool, like the ruched team. So I could do a twisted neckline, but I could combine both fabrics. So what about this? Again, this is not an exact pattern. I'm just using this as an example. Slide this down a little bit. Like cutting up. An apple pie. Oh, this could look kind of cool. There. And then I'll take these pieces to extend this even longer. All right, so now what if I were to sew all of these pieces together, kind of like a quilt, I guess. And then these pieces would have to go over here. These pieces would have to go here. Um, I would want this one to go away. So let's just make sure that this matches. Of course, they'd all have to be the same width. So you're gonna really have to bear with me here on your imagination. 
okay, what if that was the neckline? And I made it four or five inches thick so I could do the, the twisted. So then it would be twisted with both pieces. So just imagine it's all a crinkly mess and that's going across the neckline. What do you think of that? Oh, I kind of like that. And I'll make sure that the dark navy is right in the center. So if I wear a necklace, it would not compete with it. So my front would look very similar to this. Like a hodgepodge. What do you think of that? I'm just curious. <laughs> How about the snake where the navy is on the bodice and the navy where the snake is? Well, oh, that's a good idea too. Oh, you like it, okay. Hmm. I think it's kind of fun. Why not try it, right? So I'll piece that together and I'll take a photo and I'll leave it online, but I probably won't do it till Monday. I don't, maybe Friday. It's a busy week though. I, I agree, I like the twisted fabric. Okay, so see, your brainstorming helped me finish my top. Excellent. <laughs> Marta wants the plain navy. You know what, after I put it on there, I might change my mind too, you never know. <laughs> uh, what kind of leg blade is that? Oh, Veronica, are you talking about the rotary cutter I was using? That is, um, that one? That's um, from Kai Scissors. Helen likes it the first way the best. Yeah, I'll play with it because, you know, it only takes a little piece of fabric. So before I cut up into the quilting, I might take the navy and kind of twist it and see what it looks like and then take the snakeskin and twist it. I kind of like the idea of having a combination of both because it really ties in that top, but who knows? Oh, I could do like a big collar, but except it's a short sleeve and that would kind of wouldn't work very good together. Make sure you have that solid piece centered. That's what I'm thinking too. Oh, hey, Joanna, we took the video down because that was our where uh, we had a little mishap at the end. So sorry about that. But uh, Joanne, I talked to her and she's going to be coming back on uh, for her show next month. She'll do that same one so you can finish it. All right, I think I see all of your answers. <laughs> oh, I agree, Arditha. You used appliques to cover up the holes that you've cut in your fabric. Hmm. Hey, Car. Welcome from Jamaica. All right. Any other questions for me? Otherwise, uh, don't forget schedule Fashion Sewing Club. I will see you this afternoon. And if you did not get your email for the Fashion Sewing Club to join the Zoom, you're going to meet all your fellow members and bring along your questions because I can see you. If you want a fitting question, if you have a question of what you're sewing, it's going to be a lot of fun. Josie, I wouldn't want any snake thing devouring you. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, yeah, don't forget the leggings. I can do snakeskin leggings, but that <laughs> is not really me. Uh, but it would sound, it sounds cute though. But I'll skip on that. All right, any other questions? Otherwise, I'm going to leave you all and make sure... Uh, Brandy, this is the lacy. Here you go. It's right here. The lacy knit top. And I extended the coupon code from last week, everyone. So you can still use that. I think it's um, Fabric 15. Capital letters Fabric 15. That is your coupon code if you would like to uh, get that pattern. That's where you go. Angelofpatterns.com. All right, see you soon. No, <laughs> Patty, I agree. Uh, thanks, Marcia. And keep going on that, too, because uh, she's feeling better, but, you know, just until she's 100%. I, surely this afternoon is going to be a lot of fun. All right, any other questions? Okay, Peggy, you can do the snakeskin leggings. Make you look snappy. <laughs> All right, and welcome. As you know, the Wolfpack loves everybody joining from all over the country. So, all right, everyone, have a great day. Don't forget about the schedule. You can go on my website. It's right here, angelawolf.com. Here's the whole schedule, all the classes, and don't forget the giveaway. 
So all you have to do is click on blog. There's blog. And once you see that, you can scroll down. You can see the episodes from last week. And there's the giveaway. So don't forget about that. You can only enter once. But scroll on down. Here's the official entry form that you have to fill out. So don't miss that part. And then if you grow down and leave a comment on the blog post, then you can actually um, get an extra entry. All right. So hope that helps. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you tomorrow on The Brother Sews, which would be great. If you want to learn how to use a ruffler foot, I think that's going to be a good one. Those two are wonderful to watch. So, all right, everyone. Have a good day.